Hello, it's Thursday the 8th of July 2021 and welcome to our third episode of Conversations in Computational Photography, a new series by the Alice Camera team exploring innovations in computational photography, deep learning and artificial intelligence and how they can be applied to consumer digital cameras. I'm Vishal Kumar and I'm the CEO and co-founder of the Alice Camera and I'll be your moderator today. Let me introduce you to our CTO and other co-founder, Liam Donovan. He's a PhD electrical engineer who's the chief technical architect and innovator behind the Alice Camera. Hi, Liam. Hi, Vish. Thank you very much. The second person joining us today is Shelley Srivastava. She is a computational photography engineer who's a graduate in artificial intelligence and has been responsible for uh, many AI elements of our end-to-end -end pipeline. Hi, Shelley. Hi, happy to be here. Great. So things have been very busy for us over the last uh, few months, and we haven't done uh, one of these in a couple of months. So we're glad to be back uh, this time talking about autofocus. You may have seen that we released a video showing a first demo of our autofocus technique. And today we're going to talk about how we're using AI and computational uh, techniques to drive autofocus in Alice. Uh, but first, Liam, uh, why is focus important? Why is it important to have focus? Well, it's important to have focus because you want to be able to see what you're photographing or filming. Um, obviously, uh, it's it's completely essential to have, uh, have 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 the subject of your photograph or video in focus. Um, otherwise, you can't uh, pick out the details properly. So it's it's a, it's very central and very important to operating a camera. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, focus has always been central to cameras ever since uh, the very first photograph, probably. Uh, in the past, you had uh, more manual methods for focusing, but you know, over time, as cameras have become more digital, you now have autofocusing techniques. So, what what are the differences between manual and autofocus? Uh, well, quite simply, autofocus uh, does it for you. Um, with 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 autofocus, the camera is in control of uh, where the lens is focused, um, and it's up to the camera to move the focus around. Um, based on whatever algorithms that camera is running. With manual focus, it's obviously up to the operator um, completely. Uh, so it's a big challenge for any camera to actually be able to do autofocus. Autofocusing techniques have adapted and evolved. Um, and like broadly speaking, there are two different types of autofocusing techniques. There are contrast-based and phase detect. Uh, so really briefly, Liam, what are the differences between contrast-based and phase detect autofocus? Sure. So phase detect autofocus um, is quite a complicated technique, which relies on extra hardware. Um, in uh, in single lens reflex cameras, so DSLRs, um, uh, what you would actually have is a, a usually is, is quite a complex system of mirrors um, and special lenses and special sensors, which would redirect the light um, onto these special sensors that were calibrated to measure the phase difference between light in different parts of the image, um, and then could actually use that to adjust the lens um, and, and use that to work out uh, whether the, the subject uh, was in focus or not. Um, so that's a, you know it's it, uh, phase phase detect autofocus is very fast. Um, it's it's not perfectly accurate there are often kind of small errors left after after the face detection has done its job but it is extremely fast uh, but a big downside of it is that it is it, it's mechanical um in in many ways um and it requires this extra hardware to it um contrast detect autofocus on the other hand only requires the actual image um, and so it's basically a post-processing technique um, after an, an image has been captured uh, the camera will will process the image to work out how sharp the image is using a proxy that's usually usually contrast um, or kind of local contrast between pixels. Um, because when an image is in focus, its contrast actually reaches a peak. Um, and so, what contrast detect autofocus algorithms do is basically move the lens around uh, until they find a peak. Um, and so, what you actually find with contrast detect autofocus is that it's extremely accurate. Uh, and that it'll get it'll get things absolutely bang on, but it tends to be quite slow and it tends to be quite error prone um, uh, because it, there's no kind of direct measurement of sharpness. You're kind of doing this this kind of you're, you're taking the image, you're calculating the contrast, and then you're also kind of hunting. You have to kind of hunt back and forward to find the peak. Um, and so uh, it's you know they, they, the the two different the two different techniques have different trade offs, different advantages. Uh, different disadvantages as well. 
Yeah. And and you would you would assume that with phase detect autofocus, because additional hardware is required, um, it would be more expensive. Is that is that generally true? Yeah. So we spoke a bit about how DSLRs do phase detect, but um, mirrorless cameras um, also do phase detect um, autofocus. And generally, they actually have to have modifications to the actual sensor um, in order to be able to kind of install phase detect like sensors within. Um, the actual image sensor. Um, and so, yes, this does increase the cost of the sensors. Um, and it can, depending on how it's done, it can also remove pixels from the sensor that would actually otherwise be used to capture the image, um, which can degrade the image quality. So there's, that's only true of some face detect uh, algorithms. There are some other algorithms that very cleverly don't remove pixels, um, but those still require modif hardware modifications to the sensor, which creates cost. Um, and and yeah, so there are the, you know, there are lots of trade offs with these algorithms. Yeah, yeah, and you know, trying to get a autofocusing system that's fast and reliable may require you to trade off potentially on image quality and a whole range of other things, as you've identified, but. I think those things have been ironed out over time. Um, what's quite interesting is that some cameras have a hybrid approach where they do uh, a blend of, of both. Uh, do you know much about this, Liam, the hybrid uh, approach? Yeah, so I think the, the goal with the hybrid approach is to gain the benefits of both um, and to you know, perhaps uh, cover up some of the disadvantages of the two algorithms. So you, I, th I think the, um, the, the aim of the hybrid approach is to use phase detect first uh, to get a kind of a coarse, a very fast but coarse idea of where the focus should be. And then as the focus gets closer, uh, then start using contrast detect to get the error down to absolutely zero or as close as possible to absolutely zero. Um, so that is that is an advanced technique which is also very effective, but it still it still suffers the disadvantages of both techniques. And to add further complication to to the mix, but if you were to plot this out as a matrix and introduce images and videos, uh, then uh, sometimes some of these techniques perform better with stills. And sometimes some of these techniques perform better on video or worse on video. Uh, just a brief kind of discussion uh, about um, how autofocusing differs between stills and, and video. Uh, so it's it's fundamentally the same problem. Uh, the difference really is is that in video you have a very short amount of time between each frame um, to actually do the calculation to adju and adjust the lens uh, and. Uh, recording video requires quite a lot of processing capacity in the first place. Uh, and so there's often much less processing capacity available on the camera and much less time to actually do it. And that's that's why video autofocusing sometimes suffers compared to stills autofocusing. It's just all about how much time the camera actually has to do the calculations. Nice. Yeah. And um, over time, the processing uh, capabilities of, of hardware has has changed and altered, and we've moved from kind of CPUs to, to GPUs, but now to uh, NPUs or uh, AI processors and TPUs, uh, which allow uh, the types of calculations uh, that that consumer electronics can do to be to be very different to, to how a CPU operates. And uh, breakthroughs in that hardware have allowed us to uh, include uh, AI um, hardware inside of Alice. And that means we can take advantage of these new uh, types of um, calculations and new types of neural network calculations on device, uh, which has led us to uh, not look at contrast or phase detect really at all and, and build an autofocusing system principally based on, on AI. And um, what, I'd like to, uh, what I'd like to do, Shelley, is talk a little bit about um, our techniques and how deep learning and computational uh, computational methods can be used uh, in the autofocusing problem or the autofocusing task. So could you give uh, the audience a brief overview of what we're doing um, with autofocus and AI? Hey, yes, uh, definitely. So what we have been doing is we have been creating an autofocus system. So our system does things a bit differently than traditional. Uh, what the autofocus system does, it will find what it should focus on, so what's important in an image, and then how it should focus on, how you can change the positions of the lens to actually capture a sharp image of that particular object. So our system is going to look at these two different things and actually have both of them working together. 
So imagine an image uh, in which you have uh, two, you have a human and an object. So how about the focus system should pick up which uh, part of the image is more important. And our system will be different because it's not generally traditionally trained on it should only pick up humans or it should only pick up objects. So it is going to look at the overall picture and will give us a few options, it's not just one. So it can give us a few options and you can probably pick out from one of these. And uh, after all of this processing, processing is done, you basically take out, uh, you have that object and then you pass it to another model and then that model can basically tell you where to move the lens to have a sharper image of that object, if it makes sense. This is like the very brief overview of what the model is going to do. It's not just you take an image and you focus on it. It's going to be a little bit more. Uh, it'll have more steps in it. So it's going to pick at what it should focus on and how it should focus on. And hopefully both the systems will work very well together in our Alice camera. Yeah, amazing. Thanks so much, Shelley. Um, Liam, do you have an interpretation on the way in which we're using AI and autofocus together in Alice? Yeah, so like Shelley said, it's a, autofocusing is a two-step process. So the first step, you have to decide what to focus on. And then in the second step, you have to uh, decide how to move the lens, how far to move the lens, and what direction to move the lens in, in order to bring the object into focus. Um, and, and just like Shelley said, we're, we're using AI to do both of these steps. Um, and this is quite novel. Um, so in mirrorless, traditional mirrorless cameras, um, they have incorporated AI for some time now to do the first of these steps, basically to detect faces and eyes within the image. Um, so they actually use, it's relatively primitive um, machine learning techniques to pick out faces and eyes accurately, um, and then uh, use contrast or face-based techniques to actually focus on faces or eyes. Um, what we're doing is, is is quite different. We're actually using uh, uh, much more complex neural network techniques to identify the most important part of an image. Now, quite often, this will end up being a face or an eye, um, but we're not explicitly training our models to look at faces and eyes. We're actually training our models, our AI techniques, to understand when faces or eyes are the most important things in the image and to focus on them then, but also to understand when they aren't. Um, or when there aren't faces or eyes in, in, in the image to understand what is the most important object in the image, um, whether that's you know, a pet, a car, um, you, you know, anything, a landscape, a, a building, it could be, it could be absolutely anything. Um, and so that's that's a bit different to how the traditional cameras operate. Um, but the second stage of the autofocusing problem is where we where where we really kind of differ. So we don't use phase detection. Um, and we don't use contrast detection either. We actually use a novel AI-trained technique uh, which uses neural networks to analyze the, the pixels of the image um, and to infer or guess based on the kind of the, the training that the algorithm has received and based on the experience that the algorithm has had um, and to actually directly calculate um, the distance that the lens needs to move and the direction it needs to move in uh, entirely using neural networks. Can we talk a little bit, uh, Liam, about uh, the data itself? Like um, the data that we use to train our models to do the first step. Um, th you know, the success of the model it really depends on the data. But over time, uh, is there scope for our model to uh, get better or to uh, identify uh, other things that are, that are more important in the scene? Absolutely. So the biggest uh, advantage of AI-based methods or deep learning-based methods um, is that rather than having engineers like us um, kind of dictate the rules of the algorithm and say to the camera, oh, you know, if the contrast is a bit low, then you should probably kind of, you know, move the camera, move the lens in this direction and kind of writing explicit rules. Uh, we don't do that at all. Uh, we actually basically collect large data sets of in-focus and out-of-focus images where we know you know, how far out of focus the image is. Uh, and then we train our algorithms to learn those rules um, implicitly. Um, and this technique, these techniques have huge advantages, like in all, in pretty much all areas of uh, vision processing. Um, and actually, a these AI-based, deep learning-based techniques 
can uh, can perform better than traditional techniques in almost all areas of, of computer vision. Uh, and we think that in, in autofocusing, that is absolutely true as well. Um, and uh, as you said, Vish, uh, one of one of the biggest advantages is that the 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 the, the quality or the, and the performance of the algorithm depends on the quality of the data that you give it. Uh, and the more data that you give it, and the better the data that you give it, the better the algorithm gets. And there's no real ceiling um, to this. You know, the the more data you give these algorithms, the better they get. Um, and, and so we definitely expect our algorithm to just keep getting better as we as we improve it, as we tweak it, and as we get more better data. Great, um, great. Yeah, thanks, Liam. Uh, Shelley, I'd like to talk a little bit like about your the demo that you released uh, last week. Um, can you kind of run through uh, maybe a series of steps of how how you kind of came up with the demo, but also like. What excites you most about this AI-driven autofocus technique? What excites me most about the AI-driven technique is the, the capacity of this technique to actually evolve in time. As Liam mentioned, uh, the better the data set we get, the better the algorithm is going to get. Uh, so coming back to the first question, the demo. So in the demo, we only showcase the first part of our autofocus system, which is uh, the algorithm finding which part of the image is the most important. So w one of the few steps was to get uh, to actually have a data set and then go through the whole annotation uh, process of it. So once that annotation is done, you basically feed it to our own model and then the model can basically generate a bunch of uh, different interesting objects and then you pick from it. So this is kind of what the demo actually did. Uh, we haven't actually demoed the second part of the model, uh, which maybe we'll do it in future. But the uh, the demo which we did was only the first, and our model uh, just doesn't pick like it doesn't do classification on its own to just clarify on on an issue. Uh, our model will not classify like uh, this particular thing is a human or this something is an object. So it'll just overall it'll have a sense of this thing is important rather than just classifying. So we'll not have, so probably in the future, we'll not have the need to have different autofocus uh, systems for humans and for animals. So this actually gives us a greater edge. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. And, and thanks for, for making that clear, Shelley. It links back to what Liam was saying about um, cameras at the moment having very primitive uh, machine learning based techniques to do IAF or bird AF or um, dog AF or whatever. Uh, and typically those are different algorithms potentially um, or trained at least on different data sets. But what you're saying is that our AI um, driven autofocus technique will be much more global and much more holistic uh, and will be able to determine between uh, what it thinks is the most important object in the scene uh, without explicitly understanding what what is it, what what is in the scene if you see what i mean it will just understand what is the most important uh, regardless of of the subject uh and and will focus on, on on those things so so that's really uh, i think quite conceptually uh potentially difficult to to get wrap your head around um, um as shelley said this is uh, the demo, the demo that we released last week and i i hope that all of you uh, get the opportunity to to view it please do view it uh, it's very much a first demonstration of our autofocus technique. Uh, but over time, we will be showing more and more demos uh, and explaining it in greater detail how, how the technique works. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, um, do drop us a line or consider joining our Facebook group. Uh, we've, we've launched a Facebook group for our uh, community where you can join and ask questions about the development that we're doing over here at. Um, the Alice camera. Uh, and if you have any thoughts or questions, uh, please join that conversation, join the group, uh, interact with, with other people, and, and you know, we'll do our best to get back to you. Um, now, uh, just to kind of wrap up, guys, um, obviously what we're doing is definitely different. And what we want to try and do in the future is demonstrate the, the results and the capability of our, our technique versus other techniques. Uh, do, we, do we ever uh, anticipate uh, doing a hybrid uh, technique similar to other cameras? 
Or are we just going to stick it out, Liam, with uh, our AI autofocus technique? Obviously, it really does depend on, on the results. Uh, but what's your, what's your kind of um, hunch? Um, it's a good question. I, my, my hunch is that ultimately these AI techniques will be better than the alternatives. Um, I say this because they're, um, they're quite bio-inspired. They're the way that uh, animals uh, focus in a way. You know, you're, you're, you're taking information from your eyes and that information is being processed by neural networks. You know, there's no phase detection sensors in our eyes. There's no contrast, explicit contrast detection um, sensors. You know, there's, there, there are image sensors and then there are neural networks. Um, uh, in the short to medium term, it is entirely possible that the, the AI algorithms that we're developing could be helped by extra information from phase detection sensors or from explicit contrast detection. Uh, and, and so that's something we'll have to see. And that's definitely an option. Um, it's, it's, there's, there's no reason that you can't give uh, an AI algorithm a, a, a hand by kind of doing some extra pre-processing to, to, to produce the contrast uh, or, or something like that. But ultimately, uh, the AI should be better than the other techniques just purely looking at the image. Um, and I think that will happen. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to happen straight away uh, with Alice, uh, but I do believe that as these techniques develop, uh, AI autofocusing will outperform the other techniques. Uh, and if you want to stay in touch with all the developments that we're doing with um, Alice, then as I said, please join our Facebook group. Um, it's uh, Alice Camera VIP group. Uh, should be quite easy to find. I'll send a link below in the description. Um, and uh, stay in touch with these conversations. Uh, we're going to be having a second, uh, well, sorry, a fourth episode coming uh, soon about our color enhancement um, algorithm. Uh, and there will be a whole host of other conversations that we would like to have. And if you have any ideas or any suggestions for topics that we would like to cover or things that you'd like to know about Alice, then you can let us know in the comments section below. So with that out of the way, thank you, Liam. Thank you, Shelley, for joining us. Uh, and talking about autofocus, and uh, we look forward to our fourth episode, which is happening next week. So take care and stay safe.